Today's reading comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of God was upon me, and God brought me out by the Spirit of the Sovereign God and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. God led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. The bones were very dry. God asked me, Son of humanity, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign God, you alone know. Then God said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Sovereign God. This is what the Sovereign God says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will breathe in you, and I will come, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am God. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then God said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of humanity, and say to it, this is the sovereign, what the sovereign God says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied, and God commanded me, and breathe and breath entered in them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Then God said to me, Son of humanity, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone, and we're cut off. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, This is what the sovereign God says, My people. I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then, my people, you will know that I am the sovereign God when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. And then you will know that I am the sovereign God that hath spoken. And I have done this, declares the Lord. May God add a blessing to this reading. You may be seated. Yeah. Kind of sounds like a, a scary movie to me. <laughs> Done it to you when you talk about you know, a good scary movie. Huh? Uh, I don't watch I don't watch scary movies. I don't know about you, but I, I get I get too scared. <laughs> I'm not a scary movie chick. Um, the prophet. Ezekiel was led by the Holy Spirit into this valley full of dry bones. It doesn't sound like a vacation that I'd want to take. And it seems that this valley was once a valley of a great battlefield where thousands and even ten thousands of people had lost their lives in a in a, a pocket. Say that for me. Apocalyptic. See, I always I don't know why I write that word because I, I always have a hard time saying it. And you're going to help. Apocalyptic. Yeah, there you go. That kind of fight. We know. The battlefield served as a warning about the dis disastrous mistakes of the past and a warning about the terrible things that would happen in the future unless something changed. In this vision, Ezekiel had been put in the, in the middle of this valley, a valley full of human bones, baked white by the sun, dry on the desert floor. Now, there's a lot of historical context with, which we don't have time to cover in the 15 minutes that I have today. But I assure you there's a lot of historical context in this and significance to the meaning of why God put Ezekiel there that day. The symbolism of the valley of the dry bones is really clear within this message. It's clear, it says, Israel 
is dead. She was dead, and all of those dry bones uh, uh, represented that. In fact, the people in, are in despair of the exile identify themselves with these dead, dry bones. Sounds like some of us. We identify with some dead things, amen? amen. We do. As Ezekiel surveyed this gruesome scene, God asked him a surprising question. Can these bones live? Now, in Hebrew, the question is phrased in such a way that the only possible answer is N-O. No. <laughs> no, God, they can't. These bones cannot live. They are bleached out. They are dry. The heat of the sun and the wind has long since sucked out all the moisture of them. The marrow, you know what marrow is. It's in your picture. If the marrow is dead, it's dried up. And the bones are old and cracked and chipped. No, God, these bones <coughs> cannot live. Ezekiel, I was thinking about, you know, what I would say is I would say, heck no. <laughs> There's nothing to breathe life into here. But you see, that's not the answer Ezekiel gives. Ezekiel says, only sovereign God you know. Yes. <clears throat> only you know God. It is the very presence of God that prompted Ezekiel, and God told Ezekiel to speak to the bones and say to them, Behold, God will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Talk about calling things not as though they are. If you were at focus group this week, we talked about that very thing. Ta calling things not as though they are. These bones are dead, but Ezekiel, through the power of God, says, only sovereign God, you know. This is something that goes beyond the day-to-day -day happenings. I don't know, how. when's the last time you spoke to some dead bones? Well, maybe this morning. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ezekiel, mind you, has seen a lot of strange things and wonderful things in his journey with God. He cannot dismiss the possibilities of God. His answer is powerful. And the power of God, he realizes it's the power of God in him that makes it possible. He is the vessel. He's the one God will use to speak the words that need to be spoken. He's the one that's saying to God, not, I don't know God, but if you tell me to do this, I am going to do it. And he did. And so he spoke, he spoke about restoration, and he spoke about God's breath, about bringing the brokenness to healing. Ezekiel knows only God alone knows for sure. Only God alone knows for sure. You see, you thought your hairdresser knew for sure. <laughs> Some of you get it. <laughs> it's an old joke. <laughs> Before my time. <laughs> See, in the valley of these dry bones, Ezekiel witnesses God's creative power at work. What God does there in the valley is exactly the same thing that God did at creation. <clears throat> When God made humanity, when, when God breathed the life into the people, and God breathed new life into humanity. From the broken and the dead places, God gives new life. What if, what if you were one of those who was given another chance that day? I never thought really about it. I, I mean, I've preached on this passage many times. But I never thought about the dead, dry bones coming to life as actual people. 
with flesh and blood and joints and marrow and all that stuff, all coming together to make something new. I always thought of them just as bones. But what if, what if they represented real people, real life people whose lives have been restored? Only God knows. This vision of the Valley of Dry Bones is a promise to Israel of better things to come. Because, you know, it, when this was written, there was smoke was still rising from the remains of the temple and the palace. Jerusalem's walls were in ruin. And there, the skeletons and the corpses were there littering the countryside. And yet, life will come. New life will come. And not only will it come, it will flourish. So my friends, I want to encourage you to not be discouraged. Don't be despondent. Don't give up hope. Don't let despair overtake you. In the Valley of Dry Bones, Ezekiel and Judah were given this promise of new life. And 50 years later, now I'm hoping that you don't have to wait 50 years for your promise. In 538 BC, the first group of exiles returned to Jerusalem. A second and a third group returned in 458 and 444 BC. And we can read about this if you want to, if you want to make a note. Ezra and Nehemiah, great places to read about this. The people returned to the land of Israel. They built, they rebuilt their cities, they rebuilt their farms, they restored the temples, and they once again began to be prosperous. The people who were dead like dry bones were once again made alive through the power of the Spirit of God. That was the first fulfillment of Ezekiel's vision. Our lives. Our lives. If there are broken places, they can be restored. Mm -hmm. I know this because I, like Ezekiel, have chosen to say, Sovereign God, you know. I've had a few instances in my life. I don't know if you've ever had a broken bone, but I've had a few broken bones in my lifetime. <laughs> and you know what? Those broken bones, they hurt. It hurts when you have a broken bone. And it's not fun, especially when you have to wear a cast, like for eight weeks or longer. I mean, toes and arms. <laughs> Yeah, you had. A, did you have a splint? Yeah. Yeah. Was it fun? No. That's <laughs> pebbles. Not at all. Yeah, pebbles. <laughs> but you know what happens? They say when you break a bone, studies have shown that when it's broken and it heals, it's stronger than it was when it was broken. And so what that tells me is that when our spirits are broken and when healing comes, we're stronger than we were before. We're stronger than we were before. We're stronger than we even know it in this moment. You're stronger than you know. You're stronger than you know. There's some, th some things in life that realistically are probably beyond my reach. Like, I probably would never drive an Indy 500 car or something like that, because it's just not my thing, you know? But, you know. But you could. I don't know. I probably could. <laughs> I think I'm in denial about, you know, what I can do. But I can do all things through Christ. That is right. That's right. I don't, I, 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 I think age is a number. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of things that 
maybe we, we can't do. However, there's a lot of things we can do if we yes. try. Yes. If we just try. Yes. See, God breathed life into you. And God breathes life into you every single day. You're a living, breathing soul. The creator of the universe. God Almighty. Jehovah. Breathe life in you. You have the beginnings of greatness inside of you, whatever age you are. You have been crowned with God's glory. And you know what? By being crowned with God's glory, you have God's favor. That's right. But we forget. We need to call some things into our life that are of God's favor. And so, if you're lacking something, I'm going to encourage you to start thinking on the good things. Thinking on the positive things. Read Philippians 4, 8 and 9, you'll see. You have favor with God. And God, believe it or not, has equipped you and empowered you yes. for everything that you need. Amen. For everything that's coming your way. And I don't know about you, but I see some good things coming our way. Zippity doo da I believe that God has breathed into us something incredible. Yes. And to each one of you, in this new life, in a direction, and God desires us to go in this way, with favor, with hope, with joy, with laughter, with healing, and hope, and all those things. We can learn from our mistakes. We can see the power of God in your life. You can take a new breath with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because in that, you will overcome. That's right. Let's take a new breath today. Yes. <laughs> oh, God is restoring you. That's right. Breathe it in and live it out. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.